A 69-year-old Antifa activist armed with a rifle and Molotov cocktails was killed on Saturday at an immigration detention center in Tacoma, Washington, because he was trying to blow up the facility. Thankfully, no ICE employees or law enforcement were hurt, but this is exactly what we're going to have to get used to when you've got people like Ilhan Omar and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez spreading lies about these facilities, comparing them to concentration camps. And so we will go over why they're not concentration camps, the ties that this terrorist had to Antifa, and what the whole strategy is for immigration within the Democratic Party that should probably scare the hell out of you. So so please do stay tuned. John Doyle in. Heck off, commie. Hello there to everybody except the people that bullied me into getting my hair cut. Welcome to Hack Off Kami. In the video that I did not too long ago about Antifa, I asked the question, how long is it going to be before Antifa actually kills somebody? Because they'll mob beat people, they'll maim people, etc. But, you know, because a white supremacist actually killed somebody in Charlottesville, the left will not condemn Antifa because, well, they haven't killed anybody, unlike the Nazis in Charlottesville. And the reason that they do this is because they're illogical or because they're trying to shield themselves from recognizing their own BS by redirecting, right? Like if I say, well, hey, Antifa uh, is bad because because they like to get together and beat people within an inch of their lives. And then they're like, well, what about Charlottesville? And like, this is referred to as whataboutism because they're not actually addressing what you said regarding Antifa and their violence. They're just redirecting the conversation with the implication that you're a hypocrite because you said that Antifa is bad and then you didn't mention Charlottesville. And so it appears that we're getting closer, unfortunately, to the day that Antifa actually does kill somebody because nobody has made a significant effort to clamp down on them. And in fact, some people have actually been enabling this entirely because they secretly agree with the cause. Will you condemn the Antifa attack in Washington over the weekend? It's easy to condemn terrorism. Will you condemn it? Is it clear? Antifa firebombed a facility in Tacoma over the weekend. It's an ICE facility. Will you condemn them for that? Will you condemn Antifa for the attack in Washington? It's easy to condemn a terrorist attack. And some people are mad. Like right now, they're, well, you're assuming he was Antifa and you're using that to demonize Antifa. It's like, okay, first of all, Antifa does not need my help demonizing Antifa. They do that perfectly well by themselves. And yes, he was Antifa. And I'll prove it to you in just a second, because there is evidence actually to back up this association. But first, I want to talk about these concentration camps that we have. Uh, these concentration camps that we have in this country, according to our brilliant anti-American members of Congress. Take a look. The United States is running concentration camps on our southern border. And that is exactly what they are. They are concentration camps. If that doesn't bother you, I don't, I got, I like, we can have, okay, whatever. I want to talk to the people that are concerned enough with humanity to say that we should not, that never again means something. And that um, the fact that concentration camps are now an institutionalized practice in the home of the free is extraordinarily disturbing. Notice that the people who published this, they're called Now This News. They added that sad piano instrumental in the background to make it seem like what she was saying was just very moving, very groundbreaking stuff. And I want you to know something about her that I can tell you from my experience and anybody under the age of probably 24 will also tell you. She is literally an exact clone of every young leftist girl I have ever met in my entire life. Everything from her mannerisms to how she speaks, how everything is just emotionally driven. Like I'm watching her speak and I'm just getting war flashbacks from when I would have to listen to this stuff every day. It's actually incredible how little this person actually knows about history, about economics, and it's like she graduated from Boston University with a degree in economics. I almost went to that school because they supposedly have a good economics program, but any institution that could hand somebody as demonstrably incompetent as she is in the field of economics a degree that says, yes, we stand behind this young lady and the education she's received at our institution, that institution has lost all credibility. AOC is proof that Boston University, which costs like $50,000 a year, total scam. She probably paid over 100000 for her education. But she said virtually nothing that I have not heard before out of the mouth of some girl with a hashtag immigration's a human rights sticker on her MacBook Pro. Total waste of money, but can she own up to it? No. She wants to cancel student loan debt, so okay. Moving on. This is something sneaky that they do to perpetuate the perceived credibility of their comparison of Donald Trump to Hitler, as evidenced by AOC's use of the phrase never again, which is a phrase associated with the Holocaust. They say, well, they're keeping immigrants in concentration camps, and you're like, 
what the hell? No, no, they're not. And they're like, yes, they are. Concentration camps are literally camps of concentrated people. Therefore, they are concentration camps. And so when you push them to explain this, they explain it um, as such. But the rhetorical strategy behind calling them concentration camps is to draw a connection between Donald Trump and Hitler. Take a look at this clip from a protest I attended that I think sums it up quite well. States right now. Should we keep the kids with their parents or put them in cages? Which one? You're talking about at the border when they're coming into the country illegally? Concentration camps at the, our border right now, yes. Those aren't concentration camps. Those are concentration camps. Concent I would define concentration camps. I would define, not concentration camps. I would define a concentration camp as an assembly of people that were citizens being put to work and then be gassed to death, not people that were coming into the country. of concentration camps. But you're... It's a place where you put political prisoners, which they are. They're not... No, no, no. They're illegal immigrants. You're defining concentration camp in the context of Nazi Germany because you're calling Trump Hitler. They are a political group. They're being Why, what's political about them? So yeah, they're delusional. It's like, what else is new? But um, here's why they aren't concentration camps. And we'll even use Big Brother Google's definitions here. So a concentration camp is a place where large numbers of people, especially political prisoners or members of persecuted minorities, are deliberately imprisoned, keyword, in a relatively small area with inadequate facilities, sometimes to provide forced labor or to await mass execution. The term is most strongly associated with the several hundred camps established by the Nazis in Germany and occupied Europe between 1933 and 1945. Okay, cool. So... Even when we ignore the fact that typically when we use the term concentration camp, we're referring to the Nazi concentration camps or to the Soviet concentration camps or that they aren't going to be exterminated or forced to work. Ignoring that, in order for it to be a concentration camp, the people being concentrated have to be political prisoners or members of a persecuted minority. Political prisoners are people that have been imprisoned because of their political beliefs or because of their political actions. These people aren't being imprisoned. They're being detained while they await processing. If they don't like it, they have the option of deporting back to where they came from. I failed to comprehend comprehend the level of entitlement one must possess to demand entry into a country and then be upset because you feel the conditions are poor and then, well I feel like I shouldn't have to wait go home then we don't need you you need us and I'm sorry if that's a bit callous but immigration policy must be dictated by one question does this individual help the country or hurt the country that is literally that is it that would be the case if our politicians actually felt that they had a duty to the American people importing low skill people that are likely to hop onto our welfare programs does not help the American people people in actual concentration camps too they they don't get to say, you know what? I think I'd like to check. I think I'd like to check out. I think I've had enough. This was fun though. I'm going to leave a five-star Yelp review. They don't have a choice. If these facilities were so bad, people would leave, but they're not going to leave because they want to get into the country. And the left is more than willing to help them with that. And the reason for that, you know, we'll go over in a minute, but they aren't political prisoners, nor are they a persecuted minority. They are there for one reason. And that reason happens to be that they were trying to cross our border. That's it. Had they not tried to cross the border, they wouldn't be being detained. They could go back too if they wanted to. And illegal immigrants aren't a persecuted minority because persecuted minorities don't get to decide whether or not they're persecuted or a minority. That's part of the definition of both persecution and being a minority. People can decide whether or not they'd like to be an immigrant and they can decide whether or not they would like to do so legally or illegally. The persecuted minorities throughout history, whose graves you're standing on to push these policies, by the way, they didn't have the luxury of deciding to opt out of persecution, you idiots. But now, since part of the country is stupid enough to buy into this rhetoric, you've got Antifa. <laughs> And so the guy that died trying to blow up the facility on Saturday, his name was Willem Van Spronsen. He was shot dead while throwing Molotov cocktails at police and vehicles, and he was linked with Antifa. And we know this for a few reasons, one of which being the manifesto that he left behind where he writes, quote, I am Antifa, along with incoherent rhetoric about fighting fascism, capitalism, encouraging his comrades to take up arms. And it was written in like this weird, like free verse poetry format, but... Um, it's clear that he was radicalized by rhetoric that is very similar to what we're hearing from the current Democratic Party. He was also a member of the Puget Sound John Brown Gun Club, which describes itself as an anti-fascist, anti-racist, anti-capitalism, and anti-patriarchy gun club. And they've since locked their Twitter account, presumably to avoid the backlash following Saturday's events. Um, we've also got pictures of him dressed up like an Antifa member at events. And there's a video, actually, in which you can clearly see him. So take a look. Fascists go home! 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 This is important, by the way, because people on the left will say, well, he said he was Antifa. That just means he's anti-fascist. That doesn't necessarily mean that he's a member of Antifa. And it's like, okay, <laughs> I guess. I mean, his manifesto is identical to the beliefs of Antifa. He goes to the events. He's got the little costume and everything. I mean, if it looks like a duck, it swims like a duck, tries to murder people like a duck, then it's probably a duck, right? No one cares. No one even cares. People on the left are celebrating this man as if he's some sort of martyr. Take a look at what they're saying. They're saying, oh, well, fallen comrade, a hero that died a hero's death. I mean, these people are actually not in tune with reality. They are operating 
truly on a different frequency than you and I are operating on. And then of course you read the CNN article about the incident and it's like, oh, well the motive is unclear. We don't know if he was targeting the staff or the detainees. And that these idiots spend a couple paragraphs in the same article talking about, well, our immigration policy is bad. And then they drop a little abolish ICE dog whistle. So they're like, whoa, 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 take it easy, right wing. We don't know if he was Antifa. We don't know why he did this. He could have been attacking the poor prisoners. Oh, they're called detainees, whatever. So you better just wait till we have the full story. By the way, have you heard these ideas about opening our borders before? Oh, you have. Oh, well, I'll just leave them below just in case. It's like, this is why you have to abandon corporate media. Oh, well, we didn't have the full story. Yeah, we we know. No one expected you to have the full story, CNN, but there are other outlets that got it covered. So go bury yourself in a hole, listen to the sweet sound of your falling ratings. But understand, the reason for this is because they're tired of expending effort winning elections. Do you realize that if we allow these people to pour into our country, that conservatives will never hold office again? Do you realize that? Because they realize that. Texas is already becoming competitive. What's the plan after Texas goes blue? And they'll say, oh, well, we're going to legalize them, but we won't give them voting rights. Yeah, wait five years or less. And then it's going to be, why shouldn't they have a right to vote? And you're going to be sitting there, just impotently sitting there, wishing that you hadn't been such a doormat on immigration earlier because the people that are coming to this country vote overwhelmingly for Democrats, overwhelmingly. And even after three generations, it's true. And I don't care how many times some libtard gets owned with facts and logic, LOL, dumb liberal gets owned in debate about socialism. That doesn't change anything. And I get so frustrated at these conservatives, man. Like I saw a post today, it was like, we don't need Florida anymore. We have Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania sunglasses emoji. No, you don't. You actually don't have those states. It came down to less than 80,000 votes in between those states. I'm sorry if this isn't what you wanna hear, but I wouldn't call that locked down. And we're talking about adding millions of people and their votes into our elections in the future with this immigration problem. What do you think's gonna happen? What do you think's gonna happen then? Do you think these people are gonna get here? They're gonna be waving the flag of the country from which they came? They're taking low skill jobs, consuming welfare benefits, 63% of them at least. They're voting for Democrats that promise more and more public services uh, for them to consume, all of which subsidized by your paycheck, by the way. And then, wait a minute, what's that? They find a tattered copy of some Russell Kirk book on the ground and it just totally just wakes them up. They're sitting there in their taxpayer subsidized housing. All of a sudden, a Ben Shapiro Thug Life compilation shows up on their YouTube feed and it just, everything just changes. They have this great revelation. Wow, small government is the way to go. Let me present you with some much needed facts and logic, my friends. People that leave their country to demand entry into another country because they claim their country is horrible, yet they still wave the flag in celebration of that country as a general rule. They're not the type of people to give a damn about politics. The type of people that really give a damn about politics or political philosophy, patriotism, whatever, they would bring change to their own country or die trying. These people aren't going to get here and think, ah, I can finally begin my, my research into classic liberalism. Oh, or I can finally hang on my Thomas Jefferson poster. Thank God it didn't get damaged on the way here. No, the type of immigration we're seeing now at our southern border is immigration with intent to exploit. They're not waving the flag of the United States. They're actually burning it. They're not coming here out of love. They're coming here out of envy. And our politicians have an incentive to allow it because it grants them more power. The people that are going to get screwed are us, the American people, of course. And not only are our elected officials perpetuating this, but about half the country is supporting them in their efforts to do so. So this is actually an unprecedented threat and it should terrify you. Hey guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, leave it a comment and subscribe to the channel, of course, by clicking my face if you haven't already. It's how I can't, I can't just go from that to, hey guys, if you like this video, it's like my energy, oh man, we are, we are in hot water here, folks. We are truly, we are in hot water. So we have to be smart, we have to be vigilant, we have to have fortitude. Um, because we are, we are truly the only ones that are going to fix this. People that don't know about this, people that can't be bothered, they, they, you know, they're not gonna do anything, so it's us. So keep that in mind. But thank you so much for watching and may God bless America.